Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to go over how to use auto-aim. Some of you might not even be aware that auto-aim exists and is a mechanic in the game. So, first off, I'm going to go back to basics and explain exactly what auto-aim is. Auto-aim is the ability to lock your gun onto a target. On PlayStation, all you need to do is aim your gun at a spotted enemy that you have line of sight to and press R1. On Xbox, I believe it's right bump. I don't know what the actual button number or assignment for that is, but I think it's right bump. With auto lock active, you can drive your tank anywhere and the gun will automatically stay locked onto a target. So that's the very, very basics of what auto lock is and how you can activate it and you might think that that is all there is to it just lock onto a target pull the trigger and you're a super unicorn it's not quite that simple though and this is where the knowing how to use it comes in the two things that you need to know are the auto lock system locks onto the center of the target and World of Tanks has what is called shell velocity, which is basically how fast your tank shells travel through the air. With these two pieces of information, let's take a look at some gameplay. The first clip I'm going to show you here is a good example of how not to use auto lock. And the, the tank that I'm going to be using to demonstrate this all the way through, or most of the way through, is the Russian BMP-2 because it's got this crazy 200 round auto cannon on it so it's a really really easy way of demonstrating how it can and how it goes how it how it can go from working to not working in a very clear way in this particular example the mb2 has auto locked onto the mobat ahead of it and has simply pulled the trigger uh, and none of the shells are hitting the mobat why shell velocity by the time the shells have travelled from the muzzle of the MBT-2 to the MOBAT, the MOBAT has moved. The shells are arriving at where the MOBAT used to be. Now, the solution to this is lead the target. But if you're auto-aiming, you can't lead the target. And that's why this is a good example of how not to use auto-aim. Right. How should you use it then? Well, this is a slightly harder question to answer because it's very specific to every scenario you find yourself in. I am sure that everybody at some point has messed around with a garden hose. The water doesn't flow out of the hose in a perfectly straight stream when you move it about. Other appendages can demonstrate this principle as many a gentleman will know. But anyway, that's basically the principle of auto aim. The most effective way to use it is on a stationary target or a target that's either driving directly towards you or away from you. The complexity comes in when the target starts to move or turn. In this example you can see that even though the target is moving I can still auto lock and hit them. That is because even though they are moving my shells are quick enough to intersect with the target's location. I haven't hit the critical point where their speed is great enough to break the shell intersection point. As soon as the target moves in such a way that this intersection point is broken, my shots start to miss. And that's where I start pulling the trigger and that's also something that should be learned when using auto aim. If your shots are missing, there's no point wasting shells. Stop pulling the trigger. Don't keep holding the trigger down, hoping that they'll hit eventually. If they're gonna miss, they're gonna miss. Don't waste your shells. So, we have now established that there is a critical intersection window that, if exceeded, will cause auto lock to be basically a failing strategy for your game or your gameplay. The key is to use auto lock to ensure that every auto lock engagement stays within what I'm going to call the critical intersection window. If you can keep a target 
within this window, it doesn't matter what they do. They, your shots will always hit them. Keeping the target in the window, though, that's the skill. And that's where tactics come into how you approach each engagement. If you know you have to be within a certain distance and on a very specific approach to a vehicle, you can tailor your gameplay to suit that. Don't auto-lock and fire on a target that is travelling perpendicular to you. Let them drive past, turn in behind them, activate auto-lock and then pull the trigger. This principle of turning in behind vehicles to hit them also works in reverse if you want to avoid being hit as a defensive uh, tactic for play. Every vehicle has this critical auto-lock window. If you're being chased and want to avoid being hit, don't drive in a straight line. Because if driving in a straight line is what helps you hit other targets, if you drive in a straight line, then you're helping the guy behind you hit you. So don't do that. What you want to do is maneuver around, drive around obstacles, make yourself as difficult to hit as possible. What I've covered so far are what I would call the core principles of auto-locking. This mechanic is primarily used by light tanks, but of course all vehicles have the ability to auto-lock with line of sight. There are additional factors though that will affect its effectiveness such as vehicle speed, hull rotation, turret rotation, and an example of that is with the BMP. If you get into a turning fight, there are times when your, the turret doesn't quite turn fast enough to keep up with the, the, the enemy target and that's where you can you know put a dab of handbrake on to spin the hole around to get the turret round little things like that but really what I would recommend with this is just jump into a light tank and just try it out try different tactics try different approaches to gameplay try, try different types of engagements with enemy vehicles and just see what works for you because each vehicle is going to be different so I mean an example from the Cold War mode is uh, and it's very very obvious example is the tactics you can employ when you're driving the armadillo are very very different to what you can do in the BMP if you drive a BMP like an armadillo you're dead and if you drive an armadillo like a BMP you're not using it to its full potential so you do have to learn which which vehicles work best in what scenarios and yeah it's 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 all about but that's what this game's about it's all about learning the game it's all about learning the vehicles and knowing what each one can and can't do all right that's about all i have to say for auto locking and how it should be used or how i think it should be used if you've enjoyed this video please leave it a like if not a dislike don't forget to subscribe and as always I hope you're all still keeping safe and I'll see you out there.